How much does this matter, if at all? Because the name Curtis Flowers may be new to us, but it's not new to people in the South. Jesse Kelly, for instance, who I talked with today, she's a criminal justice scholar at R Street Institute. She's right down the middle. R Street usually leans to the right. She's actually been studying this case for a long time. She was getting into the legal field while Flowers' sixth case was playing out. Some have gotten through the courts, made their way up, got sent back down, had jury problems. This one seems to be how the prosecutor decided who was going to be on the in the jury box. And some people think that it had to do with race. Explain that rule to me because my understanding is while different states have different rules for selecting a jury, you can never consider race? That's right. Race cannot be the only factor of which you would eliminate a juror for. Okay. Um, race is a specific protected class. And so when defense attorneys and prosecutors are striking jurors, there's a balance there between making sure you have the most qualified jurors on the panel and also a jury that's going to be reflective of your community. What's the history of selecting jurors? Because it seems that there's an extra suspicion that this particular prosecutor or jurisdiction has been making race-based decisions. Yes, uh, Doug Evans was the prosecuting attorney in Curtis Flowers' case. And even if you only look at the trajectory of Curtis Flowers' movement through the court system, you'll see time and time again that Doug Evans was making choices that were only racially motivated. So even in the prior trials, because we know that the Supreme Court is now hearing a question about whether or not his sixth trial mm -hmm. was somehow racially biased, but in the previous cases, there was evidence of racial bias and Curtis Flowers was granted a new case. Justice Thomas, Clarence Thomas, who as most of us know does not speak a lot in the courtroom, today he spoke up and he asked um, the person who's with the defense, um, how many people did the defense attorney disqualify from the jury? And they said however many. And he said, and what was their ethnicity? And they were all white they argued that was not relevant. But I wonder, one, if it is relevant, and two, if that could speak to people to say, this goes both ways. I don't think it's relevant in this case simply because it's the duty of the prosecutor to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that a crime was committed and that the crime was committed by the accused. So in a situation where the burden is falling squarely on the prosecutor, any actions taken by the defense attorney are just or should be viewed with less scrutiny. Mm. As far as whether or not this will weigh on the judges' minds, I'm sure that it will. They consider all of the facts and opinions, but when they're looking to the letter of the Constitution, I simply don't think it's relevant in making their determination. Curtis Flowers, do you think there's any chance that we could be seeing a seventh trial for him after this? Because it seemed that some of the justices were skeptical of how this was carried out. Yes. So a few things can happen. If the Supreme Court rules in favor of the conviction, if they say the conviction stands as is, then Curtis Flowers' guilty conviction will stand and he will serve the remainder of his sentence. However, if the Supreme Court does find his bill um, sympathetic mm -hmm. and they rule in favor of Curtis Flowers, then he could be granted a new trial. His guilty conviction would be vacated. The justices could also go even broader and do something that's landmark. It all really gets back to the word intent. The prosecutor, what was the intent of striking these specific jurors and how broad do the Supreme Court justices want to go? We'll see. We're going to keep tracking that case. Let's get to the Midwest now, where historic flooding is slowly beginning to recede. Never fast enough, though. Uh, at least four people have died in Nebraska and Iowa. Hundreds more have been left without homes. This is some time-lapse video from the Thomas River. This is in Lincoln, Nebraska. The waters came rushing in.